welcome 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 good morning good morning welcome my god happy wednesday welcome Happy Wednesday. I apologize for my lateness. Welcome. As you join, go ahead and begin to share. As you join, go ahead and share. Good morning. Welcome. Welcome. God bless you. I am behind, running behind, late. Hallelujah. Jesus. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. Jesus. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Mouth God. Worthy is the Lamb. Come on, somebody go ahead and begin to share the broadcast. Come on, somebody, go ahead and begin to share. Worthy. Thank you, Jesus. You are worthy. Hallelujah. Yes. Command your morning. That's what the Lord told Job. Speak life into it. Make declarations over your morning. Declare today is the day that I will see a difference. Today is the day that will make a difference. Today is the day that my testimony will come. You have to declare it, my sisters and my brothers. Welcome, 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 welcome. And we welcome those that are watching the, on the other side, those that didn't clock in, those that didn't check in, welcome them. Because we know a lot of them are there, people of God. Just so you know, if the Lord begin to use me to prophesy, you see they come on and, and, and the place is flooded. So welcome those that are watching in silent, in secret. Welcome our secret watchers and our silent viewers. They are quiet. Welcome them. My God, Jesus. Welcome our silent viewers. We call them silent viewers. Welcome them. My God. Worthy is the Lamb. Somebody open your mouth and let us pray. Worthy is the Lamb that was slain for our sake. Worthy is the Lamb. Worthy is the Lamb. His blood was shed on Calvary's cross for you and for me. Worthy is that Lamb. Yes, He took our sins away. Oh God, He took our sins. He died for us. If it had not been His blood that was shed, you and I would not be here. So let us worship Him. He gave his life of, of, as a living sacrifice for us. He was a sacrificial lamb, my God. So you and your children can still walk around, mighty God. We got out, some of us, we got away with murder because of his blood. We did some things that we are not proud of, but because of his blood, we can raise our hands today and say, I am free. Even though we were guilty, we can raise our hands and say we are free because of his blood. The shedding of his blood that washes us, that cleanses us. My God, that fixed some things that was unfixable. Some things were impossible. To us, but because of his blood that was shed, it became possible. My God, some of us, if we look back at where we are coming from and where he pick us from, my God, my God, it's impossible for some of you even to get married to the family that you came from. And when you look back and you see that you are married, and nobody in your family don't stay married. Give God praise. If you look back and see that the women are the men in your family, none of them get an opportunity to travel overseas. And when you look at your life today, and when you look back, when you look back at your life and see God's glory, you would stop worrying about papers. Brother Devon, can I get some water, please? 
when you look back at your life and you see where God pick you up from, you see where God clean you up, and you look at the family you came from, my God, and the thing that he snatched you away from, it's time to give God glory. It's time to give God praise. When you look at the place that you live, my God, when you look, listen to me, people of God, when you, if you should look back, if you should look back, look back in your family, don't look too far in your own family, the circle of family you came from, and look at how people treat others. Look at how people treat others. I need lemon juice in it. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. You cut it first. Cut it slice piece off first. Look back and see. Look back and see where are you coming from? Where, where your family came from? The things that they did in your family. The things that people did to other people in your family. And you see where God pull you from. Where God pluck you from. God plucked some of us out of some fire. Remember, he said this thing about Joshua. That he plucked him. No, Joshua was his brand. Yes, thank you. Hallelujah. Joshua was his brand. He said he plucked Joshua out of the fire. Joshua was messy. His life was dirty. Listen to me, people of God. I was getting ready and I hear the Lord begin to say, there are some people who cannot read and understand the word of God. Some people still don't know how to, yes, process it because they are struggling with reading. That's it. Plain and simple. It's not how well you speak. It's your, 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 your capabilities, the capacity you have to maintain knowledge, because knowledge is what you know. Knowledge is what God will give you, something that you will, will remain with you. And some people don't know, don't, don't know the word, because they read the word, but they don't know the word. They don't have the capacity to, I don't understand when God was saying this thing to me. And I said, Lord, how you want me to talk to the people about reading? He said, some people cannot read. Some of them are following you and they cannot open their own Bible to read it. But I said, Lord, what is this? He said, remember the eunuch from Egypt, the one who brought the word of God to Africa, the one who brought the word from Israel to Africa. So people of God, let me share something with you. Many of us, we refuse to deal with certain people because of their capacity. We judge them. We judge them because they are not educated. This is what God is telling me. Many of us, we refuse to deal with people because they are not educated. The Lord said we shouldn't do it. The Lord said we shouldn't do it. So let us pray because many of us have people that are around us and they have capabilities. They are blessed. They are qualified in some areas. But when it comes to intelligence, that's not in the, in the no. No, they're not intelligent. And the Lord is saying we shouldn't judge them. Remember the eunuch. He had a big job. So yes, some people have big job and they're not educated. The eunuch had a big job because he was working with the queen. It's in the book of Acts chapter 8. The Lord dropped this in my spirit this morning. And I don't know who is here that is struggling. Maybe your spouse is not educated. Maybe your spouse is not intelligent. Yes, they might be able to sign their name. They might be able to go over a few words. My God, but I came to tell her. The Lord said to tell her today. Don't put no one down because at the level that you are on, they're not there. Don't put anybody down. We are all God's people. Many people get married into relationship and they didn't know that the man or the woman was not bright. Ha, Jesus. Yes, we call it bright. Some say smart. It's not about smart because some people are street smart, but they are not book smart. Some people are street smart and they are not book smart. And the, the Spirit of the Lord revealed this thing to me today. Many of us are in trouble in our relationship because the individual that we are spending time with are not bright. Hallelujah. 
it is true it is true good morning everyone welcome to breakfast with jesus today is day number three of the fasting and i am praying that you are connected to the spirit i'm praying that you get connected to this platform right now as you're here so we can dig into the word hallelujah yesterday we were talking about inheritance god is our inheritance and he wanted us to know he make it clear so we don't have to beg anybody anything and today he wanted me to talk about people that are unable to get to the level that you are at. Some people are jealous because of the level that you are at. But listen to me. You might know that they are jealous. You might not even know. People will even hate you because of education. I'm saying it because it's true. Some people will even kill you, set you up to kill you because they are not on your level. And it's a problem to them. It is true, Sister Anika. One woman said to me, you know, I've been doing this job all my life because it's easy. And it's not because I can't read. But I don't want to go back to school. I have no comments. Going back to school. And you learn something. It's called knowledge. And whatever, whatever you learn, it's okay to share knowledge. The Lord revealed to me today that many of us struggle with this thing. Some people, because of their position in life, they'll never talk to you. But this morning, we're going to break barriers in prayer. We're going to break protocols in prayer. Because that's the only time it can get done. In prayer. In prayer, some things can happen. Some of us, some positions we are going to get that we are not qualified for. But God said, I'm going to give it to you. God said, I'm going to give it to you. Some of us are, listen to me. The Bible reminds us that a man's gift makes room for him among great men. Not everybody that is gifted is educated. And some people, when they find out that you're not educated, they don't want you in their circle because they say you're not smart enough to be among them. But remember, God is our inheritance. He is our inheritance. God is our inheritance. It doesn't matter what you know. God will prepare you for what where you're supposed to be. So if you're not there yet, be still and wait on the Lord. Because some people will tell you that this company, I've been working here since I left high school. And I've never gone to college. But I, you cannot fool me in this company because I know everything. The guy who owns JetBlue, he was not able to read. The owner of JetBlue Airline, the, listen to me somebody, listen to me somebody, he was not able to read, but God bless him with a couple of dollars. And what he did, he started at the bottom by sweeping the plane, by sweeping out the trash. When you see somebody sweeping, don't judge them because they are sweeping. You don't know, my God, what God has placed in them. The man owns the airline and all he did in the beginning was sweep the plane until now he is the CEO of his own company. I don't know who I'm talking to today. I don't, but don't throw that person away yet. Don't make that mistake yet. Some people will put you off, write you off, cut you off because you can't read. I'm saying it because it's true. Many people are struggling. They have documents and they don't have a job because they are not able to meet certain, yes, they, they, whatever they have or they know, they know it cannot cut the mustard. They're not qualified enough for certain position. But God is saying, I'm going to open doors that no man can shut. God is saying, it's time for us to stop undermine. Hey, even some presidents are not bright. Yes, even some presidents for some countries and some places are not smart. There were, you know, the Lord began to drop this thing in my spirit again. There was a time when I was back in the Caribbean and the prime minister, he borrowed money from some foreign country. And when they did their, 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 their quota, and, and they did their books, they audited their books, they found out 
that the money in Jamaica owe a lot of money. And when they went to the prime minister and asked him about it, he said he forgot. People have got to let me share something with you. He's educated, but he forgot. He forgot. Somebody said, I have adult student who could not read. I have family member who came to this country that couldn't read. And when he, that person died, he was a supervisor working for the government. Let me tell you something, because he got situated and his job placed him back in school, in training programs. And he excelled. So I'm here to let you know, the Lord dropped this in my spirit. People of God use wisdom. When God plays something, it's because somebody need it. This is to help some people. Don't throw away a bucket because it didn't come with a book. Hey, my God, I don't know who I'm talking to, but don't throw it away. Don't throw away a bag because there's no book in it. Sometimes God wants you to sit down and help this person. So let us pray, people of God, because many of us, we make that mistakes. Some of us, we kick people to the curb because they are not intelligent, because they are not where we are in life. I'm trying not to use big words. Yes, I am trying. Why? Because the Lord revealed this thing to me, that there are some babies here on this platform. And everybody have to eat. Everybody need food. Babe, it doesn't matter what their qualifications are. It doesn't matter whether they can read or not. We are all one in under God. One in Christ, one nation under God. So let me tell you something, people of God. It's time for us to stop speaking negative words against people that are not able to measure up to your standard. It's time for us to stop exercising our vocabulary to people that cannot read. I'm saying it because it's true. The Lord would never place this in my spirit here today. It's time for us to stop undermine and ridicule God's people because they are not as smart as you are. They are not book smart because a lot of Christians are only street smart. And I can tell you this. Because if you're book smart and you're not street smart, you'll never make it in life. So you need to talk to these people that are street smart so you can learn from them. Yes, Sister Sharon, I'm telling the truth. I'm not, listen to me. A lot of beautiful women cannot read. I found this out and it hurt me like I felt bad. I said, Lord, how could this be? Some put, People of God, we are talking about God's business here. Some people will never give some people promotion in church. They'll never elevate you even when God call your name. Even when God show them your face in their dream. Even when God mention you in, to use other people to mention your name. They will not elevate you. Even when God say it a million times, they won't do it. Because of jealousy. They say you're not educated enough. You, you, you babble too much. You this too much. And it's because if you were educated, you would have known better. Listen to me, people of God. We are not here to stereotype or put anybody down. We are here to do God's business. Everybody needs to grow. The Lord said it's time for us to stop speaking negative words against people who are not educated. Somebody say illiterate. I, I used to hear this word a lot. Literate meaning you can read. Illiterate meaning that you cannot. It's not easy to deal with illiteracy, but you need patience. It's not easy. The Uboko Shatadabaka Sataya. I don't know if anybody you have to deal with somebody who they give problems in relationship. These people, especially women, my God, who are not that in that level they give a lot of problems because when their hormones begin to mix with the illiteracy they'll kill you some people don't like you and you don't understand don't try to figure it out some people don't talk to your pastor pastor marilyn welcome some people won't talk to you and you, you you're busy trying to figure it out but don't try to figure it out because guess what jesus guess what they'll hurt you so I came to tell her, we have to deal with them gently. We have to hold them by the hand and teach them. 
And I'm going to show you because God is here with us this morning. I'm going to show you what the Lord said. I'm going to go into this and we are going to pray. God is our inheritance. And he will use us to help others that are not able to help themselves. That's why people go to school so they can come back and share knowledge with their family members and friends and those that they come in contact with. So when you are bright, you call yourself bright, you know everything in the world, it's time for you to begin to impart that on others. Don't keep it to yourself because as bright as you are, if you don't share it, it won't make sense. It's not for you to show off. It's for you to gently hold somebody by the hand and impart knowledge upon their life. Have you ever met somebody who never gone to college and can tell everything and they are truthfully speaking it? Because somebody shares something with them. Somebody shares something with them. God bless us to help those who are poor in the spirit, poor in the word, poor in many areas. Some people are so poor, all they have is money. Some people have money and they can't read. And I said it just now about the guy who used to, uh, I don't know if he's still if he's still doing what he's doing. The, go, the owner of JetBlue Airline, he was never able to read and write. And he started by sweeping out the plane. Let me share something with your people of God. You see, you're, you're passing, rubbing shoulders with some people in the airport. You don't know nothing about them. You see a man dressed in suit. You don't know nothing about him. Not everybody that dress up in suit, meaning that, th yes, they only look the part. They look the part. Clothes, material things, make things look good. So if you know what you're looking for, be specific with God. But don't drag somebody in something and then click. No. Because let me share something with you. When people are smart, they think everybody around them is an idiot. They think everybody that's around them is foolish. Yes. They taught me this in a management program. I, and, and it's a true story. When a person is on certain level, they think everybody is beneath them. My God. My God. Hey, yes, Sister Michelle said a lot of thieves are dressed up in suits. A lot of criminals dress up in suit. A lot of scammers, they dress up in suit. A lot of murderers dress up in a suit. So I came to tell the people of God, don't put down anybody whose God is raising up. You'll get into trouble with God. God is raising up a serious nation in this time. God is raising up a serious... People of God, listen to me. God want to do something among us. But a lot of people are not prepared for it. So this is why this kind of message is coming. To prepare you what's ahead. Sister Marcia Hilton, God bless you. I hope you're feeling good today. There was a man from Ethiopia... And he couldn't read the Ethiopian eunuch. He couldn't read. Everybody know Ethiopia is Africa. I don't know earlier I said Egypt, but he was not Egyptian. He was Ethiopian. He couldn't read. But he loved God. So he went to Jerusalem to a festival. That's what the Bible call it. And it, they gave him a Bible. And on his way back... He was in his chariot. He was rich. You see, this is where we get mixed up. A lot of us young women, yes, I'm saying it. A lot of us young women, we want money. But we don't know that that man can't read and he only have money. So that man don't know how to treat you. Aside from giving you the money, he don't know how to value you. <laughs> help us, Jesus, help us. I'm saying it because it's true. Some people have money, but they don't have that. Yes, the moral character is bad. Some people know how to work well, but they don't know how to speak to you. And they mean well, but they sound aggressive, especially when we are from the islands. I'm saying it because it's true. In the book of Acts chapter 8 and verse 26, my God, it just popped right up. 
It just popped right up. Bible said, the angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. The angel of the Lord spoke to Philip. And the angel said to him, go south down the desert road that run from Jerusalem to Gaza. You see, some people like to use the word Gaza, but they don't realize there's an actual place in Israel going down close to, you know, Israel is right there on the border of Africa. You meet Egypt when you left Israel going on to that side, it's Egypt. So Egypt is right there on the border. This is why Jesus Christ was able to grow up, spend time in Egypt. This is why Moses spent time in Egypt, because it's right there on the border. Right there on the border. I guess before the, all the geographics and all the land, the lands, what you call it, the survey of the land, everything was Africa. I'm just, you know, so they change up the names because Jerusalem is right there and Egypt is right here. But Egypt is Egypt. Jerusalem is Jerusalem. Watch, watch, watch what the Bible is going to tell us. Hallelujah. The Bible said, go south down the road that runs from Jerusalem to Gaza. So he started going out and he met a treasurer and Ethiop of Ethiopia, a eunuch of great authority. Yes, some people, you can trust them with your money. You can trust them with your stuff because they won't rob you, but they can't read. God dropped this word in my spirit this morning. Hallelujah. And when he dropped this word in my spirit, I said, Lord, what is this? He said, tell them about the Ethiopian eunuch that couldn't read, that God sent Philip to teach him and baptize him. We are all one people of God. We are all one nation under God. It doesn't matter the, the color of your skin. It's time for us to know and understand ourselves. And those that think that they are different, leave them alone. They'll get it. Somebody said they will get it. Those that think that people of God, go ahead and begin to share the word. Yes, tell them, Sister Yanda, share the word. Everybody just come and sit down. Share the word, my brothers and my sisters. It's time to share. God sent Pete Philip down there to help him. God gave him. You see, some of us are so disobedient when God tells us to go somewhere. We don't want to go. God, oh Jesus, God speak to some of us and we don't want to do it. We think we are above it. We have to be obedient people of God. Philip, Philip, I'm in the book of Acts. So this was after Jesus died. Philip was, yes. He was the same one who opened church down in Samaria and destroyed Simon's business. Hallelujah. Bible said he was a eunuch from Ethiopia, but he couldn't read. But he have a big job. He have a, let me tell you how King James Version um, de describe him. The Bible said, and he arose and went and behold the earth, and be a old behold a man of Ethiopia, a, a eunuch of great. A, <laughs> of great, a eunuch of great authority under Candace, queen. The queen, he was right there. He was the queen right hand man. So he had authority. He was a big shot in Ethiopia, but he couldn't read the Bible. People of God, let me share something with you. It's time for us to wake up. Some of us are looking for people walking around with big briefcase and dress up in suit. Not all of them that look that way fit the description. No, it's just clothes. It's just material things. It's just look. It's just a look. It's just a look. I don't know if anybody get the revelation right here. It's just a look. It's just for a show. It is just for a show. Somebody go ahead and begin to share. So the Bible describe him 
a, a man with great authority under the Queen Candice. Hallelujah. So Peter went, Philip went, and he met the man. Yes, he met the man. The eunuch had gone to Jerusalem to worship. So he went to church. He went to worship God. He went to a gospel show. I don't know. He went to something to worship. He went there to worship. Because I guess, you know, remember the Bible talk about how they only used to go to Jerusalem to worship. So he went to Jerusalem to worship. And he was now returning. He sat there in his carriage and was reading aloud from a book of the prophet Isaiah. Listen this. Listen this. Sometimes you see some people with some book and they are facing the book and they are mumbling. <laughs> go closer and you'll understand. Seated in his carriage, he was reading aloud. The Holy Spirit said to Philip, go over there and walk along beside the carriage. You see, what Philip heard, now he's going to see something totally different. Philip ran over there and said to the man, he, he, Philip ran over there when he heard the man reading from the prophet Isaiah. Do you understand what you are reading? The man replied, how can I understand unless somebody instruct me? People of God, that's it right there. The man said to Philip, how can I understand? Oh, Jesus. This is the scripture that the Lord placed in my spirit. He said, we are among people that are not able to comprehend the word of God. Who are not able to read well. We understand it. We should not discriminate them. We should not put them down. We should not speak negative about them. We should hold them gently by the hand. We should speak to them with love. If a woman cannot read the Bible, don't say, look at you, your face so bright. Jesus did it one time to the Pharisee because there was a misunderstanding. And Jesus said, aren't you supposed to be whatever? Yes, because some people, they present some things to you that they are not. People of God, it's time for us to act and behave ourselves in the manner that people can come to us and teach us things. A lot of people are not able to read well. Some people never go to school. Some people never finish school. People of God, we are talking about the word of God. It's in the Bible. A lot of people are not able to understand when they go over something. They don't understand when they browse over it. We need to study the word of God to show ourselves approved unto God. We need to study for God to approve us, not man. So he was there trying to figure stuff out. But God sent God sent his anointed. He sent Philip. He didn't send Philip alone. The Holy Spirit went with Philip. The Holy Spirit went with Philip. Jesus. Hey, my God. The Spirit of the Lord went down there with him. We all know Philip was one of the apostles. We all know Jesus trained him well. We all know that he was now obedient to the voice of God. Some of us, we don't want to do anything for anybody because they are not clean enough. They are not qualified enough. They, are belong, they belong to a different race. They belong to a different tribe. I'm not going to mess with these people unless God said to do it. That's the only time you need to move. When God speak, it's time for us to move. I'm talking to you people of God. It's a fasting day. So I'm praying this word sink in. Some of us don't want to talk to people because some people, they don't know how to talk well and they come off kind of short-tempered. It's because of their inability to process certain things. It's the lack of the ability to process things why people behave the way they behave. Even in church. The other day I was talking to someone, I don't remember who it is. Even some pastors back in the islands, they are set in their old ways. And it caused people to live in sin. Jesus, 
I'm not knocking anybody. I'm not condemning anybody. But it is the truth. Some people, because of the way they were brought up, they don't want to change. They don't want to change. And as soon as they get upset, they, they connect right there with the old ways. As soon as you make them angry, they get connected with the devil. Because they know. They know it's not, it's not of God. Some of the behaviors, it's not of God. Hallelujah. I don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to right now, but I encourage you, this is the moment when you share the, the word. Jesus. The Bible said, the man said, how am I going to read except somebody show me? How am I going to understand? You have a Bible in your house. Whether you bought it or it was a gift, you have your Bible. And when you open the Bible to read it, it's the same thing if you don't understand. Only the Spirit of the Lord can come upon you for you to understand the Word of God. So never use disgrace somebody because they don't understand. This is why I encourage you to read. Read. When you open the Bible, don't, don't, don't just read on the phone. When you open the Bible, and you begin, the Spirit of the Lord will come upon you and give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Pray before you come to this platform. Pray before you open the Bible. Years ago when I was living in Florida, when I just got here, I went to visit one of my uncle and he had a friend with locks, long locks on his back. And the guy, he said to me, let me tell you something. I don't know why he said it to me. He was talking and then he said, let me tell you something. When you're going to read the Bible, before you open, he's a Rasta man. I don't know if he's still alive today. He was into music, so he was a music producer. He was every little thing. But it was my uncle's friend. He said to me, let me tell you this. Whenever you are going to read the Bible, before you open the Bible, this is what the man said to me. I went to my uncle's shop. He said, I don't go there to talk about Bible. I was not even saved. I was not even saved. He said, before you open the Bible, pray and ask God to give you wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. Listen to me. Sometimes when God uses people to talk to you, it will resonate. I forgot a lot of things in Florida that happened, but this is one of the things I'll never forget. The man said to me, whenever you are going to read your Bible, before you open the Bible, pray and ask God. Because if you don't, you will live with the word and don't understand a thing. Some people go to church and they don't understand what the pastor said. They didn't process it because they were not in the spirit. When you ask God for these three things, you will be in the spirit. You will be connected. The word will stay with you. I came to impart this on you today. We need the word of God. We need to move forward with the word. But before we move forward with the word, we have to understand what we are doing. We have to understand how to put the word of God to work. We have to understand how to use the authority we have. We have to understand how to process what we read. And only the Spirit of the Lord can give us this type of understanding. The man said to Philip, How can I? How can I unless someone instruct me? And he urged Philip to come up into his chariot and sit with him. The Bible declared that the passage of scripture he had been reading was this. This is, listen to me. This is what the man was reading and didn't understand it. I don't know if anybody get it. This is the word. He said, he was led like a sheep to the slaughter. And as a lamb is silent before the shearer, he do not open his mouth. He was humiliated and received no justice. Who can speak of his descendants? For his life was taken from the earth. This he was talking about Jesus. He was a lamb. 
He was the, our lamb. My God. He was the lamb. This is what the man was reading. But remember, God sent Philip to help this man. God already given Philip the instruction. So Philip was just, you know, trying to start a conversation. Because Philip know the man need help. Philip know that there was a performance that needed to take place. I don't know who I'm talking to this morning, but I encourage you to share the word. Instagram, share the word. Good morning, Sister Olive. Hallelujah. Share the word. No, hear this. The eunuch asked Philip, tell me, was the prophet talking about himself or someone else? So the man was reading without understanding. He didn't know anything. He was not taught. He was like a virgin to the word of God. It's brand new. Because he was coming from Jerusalem, they gave him the word of God, and now he's trying to read the Old Testament. Yes. Hey, Jesus. My God. Somebody go ahead and begin to share the word of God. Jesus. Somebody go ahead and begin to shear. My God. He was led like a sheep to the slaughter. As a lamb is silent before the shearer. He did not open his mouth. He was humiliated. Hallelujah. Turn your Bible to Isaiah 53 verse 7. This is what the man was reading. The man, people of God, people of God, we are here in the book of Acts. We are reading from the book of Acts. But turn your Bible with me. Because this is what the eunuch was reading. Isaiah chapter 53 and verse 7. Mine kushataya. Isaiah 53 and verse 7. Grab your Bible and turn to it. When you come here, come expecting to go into the Word. Don't come thinking that you're going to sit here and looking cute and watch me talk, 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 talk. It's time for you to grab your Bible and get, get into the Word. Isaiah 53. Jesus. Isaiah chapter 53. This is what the, the eunuch was reading. Yes, you need to know the word, so here it is. God sent you here today to hear it, so take it. Take what you came for. Take what you came for. Isaiah 53, verse 7, I'm going to read it. He said, he was oppressed and treated harshly, yet he never said a word. He was led like a lamb to the slaughter. <clears throat> Excuse me. And as... As, as And as a sheep is silent before the shearer, he did not open his mouth. The man was reading Isaiah, but we are here in the book of Acts chapter 8. My brothers and my sisters, now you know if you didn't know. Hallelujah. I feel the spirit of the Lord. I feel the presence of God. Sister Gracia, I know you feel it too. I feel the presence of God. The eunuch was reading from Isaiah. He was reading about what they were going to do to Jesus Christ. But we are reading from the book of Acts chapter 8. There was no understanding going on. God knew that this man was going to be a powerful evangelist. So he sent Philip down there to help the man. I don't know who is here that need help today. I don't know who is here that need an understanding of the word of God. I don't know. I do not know who is here that need to be straightened out. That need to iron some things out with the scripture. Hallelujah. Hey, 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 my God, my God, my God. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this word. The man begin to read Isaiah chapter 53. 
when Philip jumped up in the carriage, the other version of the Bible said in his chariot. He invited him, he said, come in, jump in. He said, oh, am I going to understand if somebody don't teach me? People of God, you see, one scripture will lead you to the next. People of God, we need to study to understand. Cry out to God and ask for it. He said, many people are here with no understanding. Many people are here and they are not able to read the Bible. Many people are here and people talk down on them because they can't read well. Jesus, help them. Help your people today, oh God. Open their understanding. Open the eyes of their understanding. My take it shataya. Open the eyes of their understanding, mighty God. Jesus. Jesus. Jesus, my God. I feel the presence of the Holy Ghost right here. The Lord said, tell my people this morning, go into the book of Acts chapter 8. Listen to me, people of God. You know, I encourage you, if you're here and you're not comfortable, don't stay. If, you, if God sent you here to this ministry and to be a blessing to the ministry and you refuse to do it and you don't feel like staying, I'm giving you this right here. You don't have to stay if you don't like it. Because what I'm saying is what the Lord placed in my spirit. Now is not the time for us to compare ministries. Now is not the time for us to do this type of division. God bless everyone different. Everyone have a different ministry. So we cannot We cannot criticize. Somebody open your mouth and pray. We cannot criticize anyone, whatever they are doing. Let God work it out with them. If you don't like it, I encourage you, don't stay and make an issue. Somebody said, Lord, whatever you're doing today, remember me. Somebody said, Lord, whatever you're doing today, just remember me. Somebody said, Jesus, whatever you're doing today, remember me. Jesus. Hallelujah. Whatever you're doing today, remember me. Hallelujah. Jesus. Whatever you're doing today, Lord, remember me. My God. Jesus. Mantorobo kusatara babaka sheteya. Jesus. Oh God, have your way in our life. Have your way in our life, mighty God. Have your way in our midst. Jesus. Have your way in our midst. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name. Glory be to your name, O oh God. We give you all the praise and the honor. We give you all the glory, Lord. Take your glory, Lord. Take your glory from us, Lord. Take your glory, Lord. Take glory, Father. Take glory, Son. Take glory, Holy Ghost. <laughs> Jesus, my God, have your way, O oh God. Have thine own way, O oh God. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this word. The eunuch was reading from Isaiah chapter 53. The eunuch was digging into the word but with no understanding. When you come empty, you will leave empty if you don't have any understanding. Without understanding, you cannot be established. Solomon said without understanding. He said with wisdom, you build your house. With wisdom, you open your business. But without understanding, mighty God, I came to tell you. <laughs> there won't be any establishment. Somebody said establishment, Jesus. 
Somebody said, establish me, Lord. Abaya koshoto do kosoto. Rako dabaya kandoro lobo kosababa. Randa bababa ya keshetea. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this word. Without understanding, there will never be an established relationship. If you're in a relationship and the fa- and you don't both of you are not on, on not on the same page. If you don't understand each other, you will separate. If you're in a relationship and you don't have understanding of your spouse, you will break away. Without understanding, no church will establish. Because God gives spirit of understanding. It's a spirit. Somebody said, "Lord, give me understanding." Hey, hey, yeah, 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 I grew up hearing this every day in my ears and I didn't understand that it was biblical until I became a woman of God. Until I begin to understand who I am called to be. My mother was a woman of God. And this is how she speaks to you in scriptures and parables. And I never understand until I begin to study the word of God. That without understanding, no, nothing can happen. Even if you're in school and you don't understand what your professor is saying, you will never make it. You will never graduate until there is understanding. If you are married to a foreigner and without understanding, there's always going to be personality clash. There's always going to be personality clash. If you live in a foreign country for a long time and you, you, you marry someone from back home, and that person just got here, there is going to be personality clash because you already transformed. I don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to right now, but I'm just talking. People of God, Philip had to sit down with the man, with the eunuch to teach him. Some of us, we don't have no patience. We don't want to help anybody. We don't think we are, they are good enough. Some of us, because we have degree, we don't think certain people are qualified to be in our midst. But this man didn't understand the word of God. Yet he had a big position. But you have to also remember that he was the one that brought the word of God to Africa. It means that they were ignorant of the word. There was no understanding. People of God, it doesn't matter what kind of book you read. If you don't understand, it makes no sense. It doesn't matter who you're hanging out with. If you don't understand the person, you're wasting time. It doesn't matter where you go to church. If they don't break down the scripture to you, it don't make no sense. Without understanding, you will never make it in this life. And this is when you have knowledge, you share it with those who are not knowledgeable. When you are knowledgeable of certain things, it needs, you meet, you, you know what, when God called you to teach, he gives you the spirit of patience. You have to be humble. You have to be filled with humility. When you are called to teach, it means that you're going to have people in your circle who are not on your level. And you're going to have to wait on them. You're going to have to be filled with humility. Some of us, our parents couldn't read. Many children taught their parents how to read. It's true. It is true. Haya dabako shoto roko tabaka sataya. Jesus. I'm sharing this word today. The Lord placed this word in my spirit. Because a lot of women who date men who can't read. So they never get to understand that man. A lot of men date women who can't read and marry them. And they never get to understand each other because the, communica- the communication level was not in alignment. Some people jump into relationship and they never dated, so they don't get to m- understand the person. 
some yes some people said i want to marry before i do this yes but get to know the person god will never lead you blind god will never tell you to the bible said the eunuch asked philip he said tell me was the prophet talking about himself or someone else it means that he didn't understand well, let, let, let's keep it right here it means that the man the eunuch didn't understand i don't know why they call him a eunuch maybe he didn't have a wife i don't know but he was working for the queen i'm just putting words together according to the download hallelujah so philip begin with the same scripture philip told him the good news about jesus the same scripture so philip didn't confuse him philip philip meet him on his level some of us that is our problem we don't want to meet people on their level and then when we get into trouble we say god god make god. Mm. don't blame god don't blame god you have to meet people on their level you have to find time to get to know a person even if the person come up in your life as a friend get time to know this friend so you can meet them on your level so you don't have to sound like you are extra so you don't have to sound proud so you don't have to sound like you're bragging so you're not exercising your intelligence and try to make this person feel like you're more qualified or you're more up there no no try to 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 to, to chill sometimes we gotta chill God brings some people in our life for us to help them. God brought people in our midst to help them. Meet them on their level. Don't act like you are better than them. I'm saying this because God placed it in my spirit. If you don't like this word today, come back tomorrow. Hey, Jesus. Hey, Ababoko Shataya. If you don't like this word today, come back tomorrow. Because God wants somebody here to get it today. If the word is not for you, share it. Hey, Makurabayaka. If the word is not for you, I encourage you to share it. People don't have to be on your level to be your friend. God might send this person in your life for them to teach you a lesson. Have you ever met someone who is not educated and they are able to teach you some stuff? Hey, 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 stuff that's so simple. How oh, you didn't know it? Have you ever met somebody that, you know, you look down on them, but yet this person has some skills. God really breathed upon this person with the skill set. Jesus. Yes, that's how God operate. No, Philip took it. Took the Bible from him. And Philip didn't confuse this man. Philip, go back and start from the beginning of where he was, right there in Isaiah 53. So Philip didn't, Philip didn't mess him up. He didn't get lost. You see, this is our problem. When God calls us to do something, we have to be obedient. It's so simple. He was not able to communicate. He was not able to comprehend. He was not able to process. He didn't have the, the capacity to maintain this. So Philip now was going to teach him. Yes. Yes, Sister Sonia, tell them. Open rebuke is greater than secret love. Rebuke, I am here to do it. The Bible said this is what the scripture is all about. To rebuke you, to correct you, to straighten you, to set you in alignment. This is the word of God. This is what happened. Philip told him the good news about Jesus. So hear this. As they rode along, they came to some water. So now he was riding in his chariot. He's got a horse. And so this man was really an official because he had a nice chariot. He was not a donkey. <laughs> he was not a donkey with a little thing. He was in his chariot. It was covered. It was fancy. The man life was lavish. 
but he didn't understand the word of God. You see, there are all kinds of people in this world. There are all kinds of people. He was living a lavish life. But he didn't understand. He didn't know anything about the word. Hallelujah. His life was up here. His lifestyle. And this is what caught many of us. People's lifestyle. Some people are so broke. All they have is money. So he was broke. He was poor. He got money, but he didn't have Jesus. Until you know the love of God, you know nothing. There was even a song that said, and you know nothing until you know the love of God. You know nothing until you know the love of God. You know nothing, Habako Shataya, until you know the love of God. Jesus, you know nothing, Habaloko Shataya. Jesus. You know nothing until you know. Many of us, we don't know the love of God. We have money, we have clothes, we have houses, we have kids, we have friends, but we don't have love. Many of us, we lack love. We don't have love in our heart for others. We don't think that we need to meet people on their level to help them. We want to talk about what we have. But we don't, listen to me, when you give a man a fish, you feed him for the day. But when you teach that man how to fish, you feed him for the rest of his life. Some people would rather to give you a fish a day. They want you to stretch forth your hands to them every day, to be a beggar. They don't want you to be in the position that they are in. So they'll never teach you how to make money. They'll never teach you how to operate. They'll never teach you how to do good. Because they want to take the glory. They don't want God to get the glory. Some people will never help you to be great. No, they don't share knowledge, but they want to empty you. Some people will tell you, go read the Bible for yourself. They will never share any information with you. But I came today to tell you, it's time for us to dig into the word. So as they rode along, According to the word of God. The eunuch said to Philip, look, there's some water. Why can't I be baptized? So you see, Philip taught him and taught him also that unless you come to Jesus Christ, you'll never know anything about God. The Bible said, no man cometh to the Father but through Jesus Christ. No man. So Philip even taught him the gift of salvation because salvation is a gift. If you only knew the blessing that salvation gave, you'll never stay away. If you only knew the blessing that salvation bring, you will never stay away from it. Philip taught this man that salvation was a gift. Philip didn't just praise, he go all in. Remember, he was on a mission because God sent him. Sometimes God sent us to go someplace and we don't want to go. Wherever he send me, I'll go. Why? Because there is somebody there that needs something from me. And God is going to use me to give it to them. I don't have a power of my own. Whenever God sends you somewhere, people of God, go. Because this man needed to be baptized. He needed to know the word of God. He needed to go back to Africa to teach. He needed to go back to Africa to preach. He needed to go to Africa to tell them about salvation. But he couldn't do it on his own. So God sent his apostle to help the man. But a miracle is going to take place. Two miracles the man will get to see. So any gift that Philip had, that man will receive that same gift. Watch. Just watch. The man said, why can't I get baptized? There is water. Listen to this. He ordered the carriage to stop and went down into the water and baptized him. So Philip ordered the carriage, 
order it. Uh, we are in verse 39. I don't want you to get lost. The Bible said, yes. In verse 38, the Bible said, He commanded the chariot to stand still in King James Version. So that was the gift of miracle. Philip commanded the chariot so they couldn't, those horses couldn't move. Philip commanded them to stand still. The Spirit of the Lord Jesus, my God, listen, he commanded the chariot to stand still and they went both into the water and the eunuch, Philip and the eunuch, and he baptized him. In verse 39, he said, and when they were come up out of the water, the spirit of the Lord caught away Philip. So Philip disappeared and the eunuch saw him no more. And he went on his way rejoicing. You, let me tell you, salvation is a gift. People of God, if you only know the, the, the freedom and the liberty you have when you give your life to the Lord, if you don't, if you know the joy it brings to your heart, if, if you know the, the, the love that you feel, if, if you know how, how beautiful, how beautiful it feels on the inside, it's a word that cannot describe. It's a feeling that words cannot describe. The way you feel when you give your life to the Lord. The joy you feel. You know that sin don't have you anymore. You know that you have authority to bind up and destroy. You know that God is here with you. You feel the presence of God. You feel like a brand new man. You feel like a brand new man. So the man was rejoicing. He rejoiced his way all the way back home. But the man get to see. Philip commanded. The Bible said he commanded chariot to stand still. So that was the first miracle. He commanded those animals to stand still. And he went down in the water and baptized this eunuch. And when he come out of the water, the Bible said the spirit of the Lord took him away. So Philip disappeared. So Philip had the gift of miracles. So that man went away with the same gift. Babe, listen to me, people of God. I don't know you heard this. Whatever falls from the head, it falls to the shoulder. Whatever gift your pastor have, you will receive it. Whatever falls from the head, it falls to the shoulder. Whatever gift your papa, I don't know who I'm talking to right now. I don't know who the Lord is using me to talk to right now. But I came to tell you whatever falls from the head, it falls to the shoulders. Oh, Jesus. Somebody help me to worship God. The man went on his merry way rejoicing in the Lord. People of God, let me share this with you. God is our inheritance. He sent me here this morning to talk. A lot of us don't understand the Bible. A lot of us don't know how to read. The man didn't understand a thing. But when Philip met him, he didn't understand. But he left rejoicing. So he received his breakthrough. What do you, what, what did you came here looking for today? What did you show up here today looking for? What's your motive what do you need from the Lord? What did you come for today? I know you didn't come to just to see me. I know you know that we're fasting. So what was your agenda? What's on your agenda today? That when Philip went to the man out of obedience, the man was confused because he didn't understand the word of God. But when Philip disappeared out of his life, the man never asked a question. The Bible said he left away rejoicing. He went on his way rejoicing. But Philip was found in a different town in verse 40. The Bible said, meanwhile, Philip himself further north at a town of Azotus. So God... He, Jesus. Philip disappeared and went to a different town further north. Anybody remember 
Philip was at salt in the beginning. In the in, we are in the book of Acts, chapter eight, and I started at verse twenty six. God said to Philip, "Go salt." down into the desert road that runs between Jerusalem and Gaza. Now in verse 40, the Bible said, meanwhile, Philip was found further not. <laughs> so, not salt. So Philip was salt. So he went south. He went to 95 south. But after he was finished with the man, he was at 95 north. Philip didn't have any vehicle. He vanished. He had the gift. I don't know if anybody get this revelation. But out of obedience, Philip did what he was supposed to do. The man was confused in his chariot, trying to figure out what is this? Is the Bible talking about Isaiah or is the Bible talking about somebody else? He didn't understand. He was reading without understanding. He didn't know anything about Jesus Christ. Because if he knew about Jesus Christ, he would not ask that question. People have got let me share something with you. No question is stupid. The only stupid question there is, is the one that you don't ask. You ask a question because you need an answer. Don't let people tell you that it's a stupid question. Listen to me. It's not stupid. We're talking about stupidity. There is no question that is stupid. The only stupid question there is, is the one that you don't ask. There is a thing called foolishness. Because the Bible said, in the thought of foolishness is a sin. So there is a difference. Some people said, stop asking stupid questions. No, no question stupid. The only stupid question is the one that you don't ask. When you need to know some things. But God will never put foolishness in you to ask your pastor. No, because God already said, foolishness is a sin. If Solomon said it, it's coming from God because it's in the book of Proverbs. So God placed this in Solomon to share with us. The thought of foolishness is a sin. But there are no, any question you need to know, ask. Anything that's boggling your mind, ask. Anything that's weighing you down, ask. Because you need to know. Some people get some dreams and they don't understand it. Ask somebody or go to the Lord in prayer and say, Lord, I don't understand what this thing means. Lord, I need understanding. He will speak to you. My brothers and my sisters, the Lord will speak to you. God knows you. So we are going to pray. People of God, we are going into prayer. We are going to enter into prayer because he said he is our inheritance. Anything we want, we have to come to him. He said this in the book of Psalm chapter 16. Hallelujah. Jesus. He said it. My God. He said it in the book of Psalm chapter 16 that he is our inheritance. He said it. And God never lied to us. He never lied to us. Because he don't want nobody to confuse us. He will never lead us wrong. He will never lead us blind. God will never lead us blind. Hallelujah. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18, it says, The priests, the Levites, and all the tribe of Levi shall have no part for inheritance with Israel. They shall eat offering, they shall eat the offering of the Lord made by fire, and in his 
uh, and his inheritance. They shall eat the offering of the Lord made by fire and his inheritance. Therefore shall they have no inheritance among their brethren. The Lord is their inheritance as he had said unto them. So God was their inheritance. The Levites, the children of Israel, um, one of the tribe was the Levites, Levi, Leah again. I was talking about ugly Leah. The Bible described Leah as cast eye. Leah brought children of the promise. Leah brought two, two powerful children, Judah and Levi. The Levites, they were set aside. They were priests. That's how Aaron came about. That's how Moses came about. They were from the tribe of the Levites. Hallelujah. So them, they didn't receive any land. In the book of Numbers, when God was sharing land and counting them and giving them portion, he said, but the Levites don't give them any land. They get to live in the suburbs. They get the best of everything. They get to live in the best areas. They get the first fruits. That, yes, because they were chosen. The Bible said, for the Lord thy God have chosen him out of all thy tribes. Because out of the Levites, Jesus came. Anybody understand? Yes. They were chosen. Even though the other rest of Jacob's children, they were blessed. But the Levites, they received a different type of inheritance. They didn't have to fight anybody for any land because God was their inheritance. So, though, so they get the best of the cities to live in. They get the best. They were set aside for service. They were dressed up like priests and sit down and wait for service. Hallelujah. God has chosen them. I'm in the book of Deuteronomy chapter 18. They received the first fruits of also of thy corn and thy wine and thine oil, the first um, fleece of thy sheep, because God chose them. You see, when God set someone aside as a leader, they are, the, the, the congregation is supposed to bless this person. This person is not supposed to lack anything because it is the work of God. That person was set aside for service. And this is why in some church, when you go there, they'll show you an envelope. They give you an offering envelope. And on the envelope, there is a little part for the pastor. They call it love gift. Yes. They, they were set aside. The Bible said, And if a Levite come out of any of thy gates out of Israel, where he sojourned, and come with all his desire of his mind unto the place which the Lord shall choose. So God always provide for the Levites. People of God, we need to know who we are in Christ. Because in the book of Deuteronomy, Chapter 18, verse 1. It says, God set them aside. They were blessed. They didn't have to struggle like anyone else. They were chosen by God. Anybody, know, let me tell you something. Sometimes, because some people, they're coming from some family that is not big shot or wealthy People don't look at them. But if you look where Jesus came from, you will change your mind. Tell somebody, if you know where God picked me from, you would never try to curse me. If they know where God picked you from, they'll never try to curse you. If you know where God take you from, you will tell them, don't try to curse me because you don't know where God cleaned me up from. You don't know what, how far I came. If they only know if they only know 
what God is doing in your life. They will never call your name. Jesus. If they know where God is taking you, they will never speak negative of you. Hey! Jesus, if they only know what God is getting ready to do in your life, they will never try to even work witchcraft because it's not going to work. If they know where God is taking you, they will never try to disgrace you in the first place. I, I, I don't know who the Lord is touching right now. But I came to tell her, if they know, <laughs> if they know, somebody go ahead and begin to share this word. Hallelujah. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this word. Jesus. My God. Jesus. Mm. Hallelujah. Jesus. You know, I was reading an article. And they're saying that if you still working, <laughs> be grateful. If you're still able to take care of your family be grateful to God if you are still able to maintain your business be grateful to God if you are still operating in the position that you started out this year be grateful to God if you are still eating and drinking and spending time with your family be grateful to God if you are still in ministry be grateful to God why Victoria secret declare bankruptcy number one everywhere you go in the world there is a Victoria secret in the mall in the airport Victoria secret declare bankruptcy they sell women's stuff number two Zara close 1200 stores number three La Chapelle withdraw 43,000 and change stores. No, 4,391 stores. Number four, Chanel is discontinued. Number five, Herms is discontinued. Yes, that, 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 that brand that in Jamaica people are doing anything just to get a pair of sandals. Herms, yes, they have discontinued. So anything you receive soon, it's fake. It's not real. These things have been discontinued. Hallelujah. Um, what is called Rolex discontinued production. The world luxury industry has come crumpled nike as a total of 23 billion us dollars preparing for a second stage of layoffs so if you have your job be grateful hallelujah if you have your business be grateful if you are in good health be grateful i'm reading gold's gym filed for bankruptcy the founder of Airbnb said that because of the pandemic, 12 years of effort were destroyed in six weeks. I'm reading. Even Starbucks also announced to be permanently closed for four of their 400 stores. People of God, I'm reading. We need to understand these things and how serious the time is. My God. My God, Jesus, my God, Rolex discontinued production, Rolex watch. <laughs> Domino Pizza closed 553 stores. Prada closed 127 stores worldwide. You see? And I could go on and on and on and on. So if you have your home, that God bless you with. Be grateful to God. If you have your business. That God bless you with. Be grateful to God. I know I read out all these things. Be 
because a lot of people are worried about what they don't have. They are worried about what they want to do. They are cons Be grateful for the position that you are in right now. Hallelujah. Be grateful. Be grateful, my sisters and my brothers here today. These chains have closed down. They discontinue. There will be no more. You see, information is important. Somebody said, I never know that. A lot of things you don't know. A lot of things. Some people just shut down. Some people just shut down. In this time, a lot of business have boomed ex extremely high. They, they, yes, they're at the top of the roof. And a lot of business have closed. So if your business is growing, be grateful to God. If your ministry is growing, be grateful to God. If there's food on your table, be grateful to God. You see people every day walking around. That don't mean that they're okay. You see people every day and they're talking to you. That don't mean that they're okay. Be grateful for your current situation. Be grateful, my brothers and my sisters. Be grateful. You see some people on TV, some of them are dying. You see some people in the movies, some of them have AIDS. Yes. We need to have an attitude for gratitude. Some of us, we behave like the world owe us. The world don't owe us nothing because a lot of people died during the pandemic. Some of them were not even sick. They went in and they never come out. And this is causing some problems. Some people have serious medical problems now and they don't want to go to the doctor. They don't want to go to the hospital. Give God glory for what he's doing in your life. A lot of things have shut down and we are complaining. We need to stop it. We need to stop complaining and glorify God. Whatever you can do for somebody, do it for them and don't complain. I say this every day. If there is somebody that you know that need help, help them. Help them. Don't curse them. Help them. Somebody go ahead and begin to share this word. If you know somebody in a situation and you can help to make it better, do it. Don't criticize them. If you know somebody who don't understand the word and they come to you with a question, don't shame them. Be grateful. None of us know what tomorrow may bring. Nobody know what tomorrow may bring. We are living on borrowed time. Many of you here are living on borrowed time and the Lord is saying it's time to come to him. Come to Jesus. The reason why I can sit here and bring this kind of message is because of the love for the Lord. He placed this in me. So I came to today to tell you, salvation is free. Come to Jesus now. Turn your life over to him. The man was not a Christian, but he went to Jerusalem to a, 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 a gospel show. He went to a meeting. He went to, yes. Yes. He went there to worship. Because back in those days, only in Jerusalem, you could go to worship. Some people didn't understand that they could worship God at home. Some people never understand that they could worship God in their kitchen. My God. But I came today to tell you, I'm encouraging you, come to Jesus now. If you gave your life over the phone to the Lord, if the Lord used me, all you need to do is to get baptized. Yes, baptism is a must. It is imperative. Jesus Christ was baptized. Even Jesus Christ, God sent him down here. He came down here in the flesh. He was God Almighty himself. He came down in the flesh. And he got baptized by his cousin, John the Baptist. It's time to give your life to the Lord. My brothers and my sisters, 
It's time to give your life to the Lord. Salvation is free and it's sweet. You see what the man said? How am I going to understand the word of God if I don't know it? But then in the end, the Bible said he was, he left rejoicing because he gave his life to the Lord and he know the word of God. Nothing is greater. There is no intimacy as powerful as being intimate with Jesus Christ. There is no intimacy as powerful as being in love with Jesus Christ. Fall in love with Jesus all over again. It's the sweetest thing. It's the sweetest thing that you could ever do. Falling in love with Jesus. It is the sweetest thing I know. Hey, I know. I know, I know, yes, let us fall in love with Jesus all over again. Let us fall in love with Jesus, God bless you, all over again. My brothers and my sisters, if the Lord touch your heart to bless the ministry, do so. The number is 860-634-8557. But if the Lord said, you're here for me to pray for you, I cover you right now in the blood of Jesus Christ. No weapon that show up will function. None of the things that the enemy sent to destroy you will happen. Today is day three of the fasting. And if you're here without documents, I'm going to say this until I, God call me home. Because I know what it feels like to live without proper documentation. Because without proper documentation, there are some limitations. Hallelujah. And I come against that spirit of limitation in your life. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I come against the spirit of limitation. Somebody said, I have my own church, but I come here just for the word. I'm not going to say anything. You have your own church, but you come here for the food. You have your own church somewhere else, but you come here for food. It's time to bless the ministry, people of God. It's time to come into covenant with this fasting. It doesn't matter how small it is. Whatever the Lord placed on your heart to do for this ministry. Remember, God will honor your prayer requests. Whatever he touches your heart to do, I pray for every soul that will stretch forth your hand to bless this ministry today. I pray that God remember you. I pray that God turn it around for you. God will never tell you to do something that's not good for you. So whatever the Lord touches your heart to do, whatever you are led, somebody said if you are led to sow a seed, if you are led to pay offering, if you are led to pay tithes, if you are led, whatever you are led to do. Somebody said I don't have a church and I want to join this ministry. Somebody said, I want to be a part of this because I come here every day and I eat food. May the Lord see you true. May the Lord see you true. Somebody said, I'm blessing this ministry today because I'm claiming my portion of wisdom, knowledge, and understanding. I'm sealing this word in my life. May the Lord bless your seed. May the Lord bless your seed. Somebody said, I have a husband at home and he cannot read and he give me hell. May the Lord bless your marriage. Hey, somebody said, I'm going to sow in this ministry because this word was mine today. May the Lord open doors for you. May the Lord do it in your life. Oh God, I bind up that spirit of limitation that's blocking you. That limitation that prevents you from going further, I destroy it right now. 
in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I block it. I block it from your life. I block it from your life right now. I block it from your life. Somebody said, woman of God, you don't know what I'm going through in my marriage. Somebody said, woman of God, you don't know how I'm going through. I'm dealing with illiteracy in my marriage. Lack of communication, lack of understanding. And I'm sealing this word with a seed. May the Lord give you your heart's desire. May the Lord bless your finances today. Somebody said, woman of God, I want to sow a seed for my friend because she cannot read and she's going through hell in her relationship. Or her husband is giving her hell because he cannot read. And I'm sowing a seed in her life for understanding in their marriage. I don't want them to separate. May the Lord bless you because of this heart that you have for your friend. May God show up on your behalf today. Somebody said, woman of God, you don't understand. My son cannot read. And every woman he get into a relationship with, it don't go well. Today I'm sowing a seed into my son's life because he is illiterate. And I'm praying for my son to give his life to the Lord. I'm praying for understanding of the word for my son. Oh God. May the Lord bless you and the heart you have for your children. May the Lord bless you and the heart you have for this ministry. May the Lord bless you and the heart and the love that you have shown to this ministry. May the Lord bless your finances. May the Lord increase you. May the Lord do it for you and your family today. May the Lord show up on your behalf. May the Lord send ministering angels to minister to your family. Hallelujah. May the Lord do it in your life. My God. People of God, the number is 860-634-8557. I will be back in two hours so we can take our communion. But for now, my time is up. I will be back in two hours. So come back with your crackers and your water or your bread and your water. Jesus. Sister Raquel, may the Lord honor your request. May the Lord honor your request. Sister Ayasin Bailey, may the Lord honor your request. May the Lord do it in your life. May the Lord turn it around for your good. Jesus. May the Lord fix it for you. And if you're here and you don't know this Jesus that we're talking about, say, Lord, come into my heart. Lord, come into my heart. I invite you in my heart, O oh God. Give me a heart of flesh. Remove the heart of stone. Somebody said, woman of God, I want to give my life to the Lord, but the devil keep fighting me. Oh God. I present your people to you today. Remember them. Remember them, oh God. Remember your people today who are struggling with miscommunication in their relationship with family and business and ministry. Remember them today, oh God. Remember them today. Let it be well with your people today, Abba Father. Let it be well with them. Today I pray for Shevan Roden. I'm calling you by your right name. Your rightful name that was given to you. Your given name. May everywhere you go, the Lord use you. May the Lord use you everywhere you go, Shevan. I release this upon you today. May everywhere you go, mighty God, speak through you to touch the lives of the people you come in contact with. Mababoko roboko sataya.
I decree and I declare this done right now in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Oh God, remember your daughter today. Remember your sons today, oh God. Remember your children today, Lord. Have your way in their life. Touch the hand of those that will stretch forth. And those that who don't have the heart to forgive, remember them, Lord. Give them a forgiving heart. Give them a forgiving heart. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. People of God, go ahead and begin to share the word. People of God, go ahead and begin to share the word. People of God, go ahead. Begin to share. Begin to share. And I say, remember, you have your prayer request. Write it down. And put it in your Bible. Somebody said you could get a Bible for a less, less than $10 on the internet. Go to christianbookstore.com and get a Bible. Uh, people of God, as we are fasting, we are continuing our fasting. Remember, get anointing oil. Get anointing oil. Jesus. Hallelujah. Get anointing oil. Jesus. Get your anointing oil. I have used this whole bottle right here so far on you here on Facebook. Whenever I lift up and begin to pour, I'm using it on you in the spirit realm. But I encourage you to get order your anointing oil. We are fasting. You need answers. You need answers, my brothers and my sisters. You need answers from the Lord. And we are praying until he answer our prayer. Whatever you need, ask and it shall be given unto you. Seek and you will find. Ask and it shall be given. Knock. Knock. Tell God I'm knocking, Lord. I'm knocking one more day, Lord. It's me again. You said ask, Lord, and I'm asking you. Ask and it shall be given. People of God, my time is up. I'll see you in two hours. Come back in two hours so we can break bread in the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. God bless you. Yes, use what you have. Sister Sophia, you say yours is finished. So order it. Hallelujah. Jesus. Yes. God bless you all. Order your oil. And the ones that don't have prayer shall you need it. And tell God, I'm knocking, Lord. It's me again. You need to get your stuff. I don't know what some people are. Every day you sit down, you said you're waiting. I come and I pour on you. When I pour the oil to anoint you online, you receive it in the realms of the spirit. But there are some times that you need to wake up and pour some in a little water and drink it. That I cannot do for you. I can't drink, pour it for you to drink. Just pour it in the water and drink. God bless you all and I'll see you in two hours.